Welcome to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I am your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm speaking to you from New York City on this, the fourth day of December 2018. And I do like to remind you each and every week that I write a newsletter called uh, Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks, and you can subscribe to that letter uh, at miningstocks.com, miningstocks.com. Uh, it is a letter that focuses primarily on the junior mining sector, the exploration companies, and they have gotten battered and hit very, very hard over the last year or so. Uh, so my view is that uh, probably now is not a bad time to look at that sector, although the uh, human inclination is to not look at stocks when they're battered. Uh, I would suggest that you might want to think otherwise. Uh, would also encourage you to consider subscribing to Chen Lin's letter, What is Chen Buying, What is Chen Selling? is an excellent track record, has done extremely well, especially in the biotech sector. Uh, he also has uh, done quite well in the mining sector, as well as the energy, uh, with various energy stocks as well. And uh, I also want to mention uh, Michael Oliver, of course. He'll be with me momentarily. Um, Oliver MSA, OliverMSA.com is a place to go to sign up for his wonderful newsletter, which he shares with me, uh, Momentum and Structural Analysis. And uh, as I say, Michael will be with me in just a couple of minutes from now. We do want to thank our sponsors for making this show economically viable. Sponsors for today's show, RN Resources, Novo Resources, Sandstorm Gold, uh, Triumph Gold, Gold Mining Inc., Uranium Energy, and Klondike Gold Corp. I've titled today's show, Why Interest Rates Are Inevitably Heading Higher. Alistair McLeod, Ivan Bebek, and Michael Oliver are my guests on today's show. Alistair, uh, who is my main guest, he says that uh, he'll be with me. Well, he'll be with me in the second half of, the, of today. And uh, in the um, November twenty second article that he wrote for Gold Money, he stated the following, and I quote: "There are growing expectations that the current cycle of rising interest rates will result in a deflationary recession." While a credit crisis is increasingly likely to evolve in the coming months, it is a highly inflationary situation. A combination of higher interest rates and catastrophic falls in purchasing power of fiat currencies will continue to plague welfare-driven states in the wake of a credit crunch. The standard post-crisis solution of monetary and fiscal reflation will not be available in this term according to according to uh, what Alistair wrote, and we'll ask him about that. Certainly uh, want to find out um, what we should be looking forwards to, why in the world won't the uh, central banks be able to do what they've done every other time we've had a decline in the uh, in the markets, just simply print more money. So we'll, we'll definitely be asking Alistair why he thinks this time is different. You know, people always say that this time is different, and uh, usually it doesn't turn out to be all that different, but... Sometimes there's a major turning point uh, in, the, uh, in the longer-term history, and so we'll see what Alistair has to say. Uh, during the second segment of today's show, in just a few minutes from now, after our first commercial break, I'll be talking with uh, one of the most successful young entrepreneurs in the mine exploration business, and he is Ivan Bebek, the executive chairman of RN Resources, which company is starting to drill its world-class gold copper target in Peru, like most gold exploration companies now, RN's shares are selling at their lowest level in several years. I think I looked at a chart about, it's at a three-year low at this point in time, not because of lack of success in their exploration efforts, but because the gold exploration share markets have been hit so hard over the last, uh, after, over the last year or year and a half or so. The key to success when it comes to investing is to buy quality assets when they are out of favor then when the gold exploration share markets finally turn, I expect Aaron and a host of other companies that I follow in my newsletter uh, to reward in patient investors with very sizable gains. Uh, so we want to wait and see when the gold market is going to turn. And, uh, well, we have Michael Oliver with us. He always has uh, his reliable work, provides us with a, a guideline in that respect. Thanks for joining me again, Michael. Hey, Jay. Good to be back. It's really good to be back. You know, we always like to ask you about gold and silver. I want to ask you especially about silver today, but before we get to that, given the fact that the equity markets are down now 670 points, that is the Dow, and the uh, I think all the markets are getting hit comparably hard, uh, I want to ask you what's going on there now. Alistair McLeod, um, you know, he, he uh, he's going to talk to us about the equity markets and about the, the economy in general. He thinks interest rates are headed 
higher long term. And I think he believes that we were, he's been predicting actually that we're going to have a pretty tough equity market here before the end of this year. Seems as though it's turning out to be true possibly. But what are your thoughts right now on equities? And I know last weekend you devoted half of your extensive weekend commentary to the equity markets. So uh, obviously they're, they're very important to you right now. Right. I think that they were the last to make the major turn. Bonds turned in 2016, downside, meaning higher rates. Gold bottomed in late 2015, never went back to the low. Uh, a lot of things turned a year or two ago, but the S&P, uh, being the strongest of the developed market stock indices, the U.S. market is compared to Europe or Japan even, uh, is top now. I think it topped in September, period, exclamation point, circle that. It was the top. Now, that's, that, that answers one question. Then the next question is, well, what happens now? Well, is it a layered decline that only later becomes nasty? Or does it get nasty uh, shortly after the top? Mm-hmm. Well, so far it's been sort of nasty, but you can go back to 2000 top in the S&P or the 2007 top. And while you got some sharp drops off of what was the high, uh, it really unfolded in layers, and it wasn't until you know mid 2018 before it really started to come apart. But it, in in between that time, the October 2007 high and the mid 2008 sharp drop, that you had a lot of sharp sell-offs but sharp rallies as well. So it was very confusing, with a downward downside bias. But the rallies turn heads, and that's what we just had here the last few days, mm-hmm. uh, and. What's really going on is, if, you, if you'll do some examining underneath the covers, uh, instead of just looking at the price charts, the NASDAQ 100 had been our leader index, uh, you know, led by uh, Amazon, Google, things like that. Uh, it collapsed on a relative performance basis to the S&P uh, before the October decline in the index's net prices. And on the rebound since then that we've had, the spread really has not recovered. So what's going on is we're not getting rebuying of the leadership stuff. We're getting buying of things like consumer staples, <laughs> defensive stocks. Yes. Uh, not getting the buying of the old leadership. So the rally is is being it, it masking that reality. The reality mm-hmm. is that we're not back to normal. So I think the rally is baloney. This particular rally is really a professional would cho- would would chuckle at it. You had two pieces of news. One, Powell said what you wanted him to say. Yeah. To say, well, uh, we're waving a white flag to some extent. And then two, we had the, the China trade uh, deal postponed. So two great pieces of news, so you buy the news. Well, the guys that bought the news are wondering right now. Um, I suspect strongly that if you get back down into the 2600s, uh, it even approach the recent lows, the October low and the low we made uh, last month, uh, they're going to blow it out the bottom. And by blow it out the bottom, I think the next step is you go down and take out the lows of the year, which are around 2550, S&P now, and you go maybe to 2400. I see some reasons to have a fight there. That's mm-hmm. the big issue. Are we going to unfold in an arduous manner, like the 2000 top, the 2007 top, which means a lot of arm wrestling before you really get the bear going, or do you precipitously collapse? And I think the decision isn't made here. The decision is going to be made around 2400. And that's the area you've got to watch, because if that doesn't hold, you could get something much sharper and faster. And I don't mm-hmm. know the answer to that. I just know that that's the key area. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I think it's, it's important to gold, obviously, and the T-bonds. Uh, the bonds are having a rally now. Rates are dropping. And I think that rally is a counter-trend rally, meaning mm-hmm. ultimately we're not going to get lower rates. But in the short term, I think bonds are being bought by people who are nervous about stocks. And I think gold is getting some of that benefit as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. Certainly, uh, uh, I, I think uh, a lot of people feel that, uh, you know, as Alistair McLeod is going to talk to us about, a lot of people really feel that we're going to have a replay of 2008, 2009. If we go into a credit crisis, we'll have, uh, cra- you know, collapsing rates, and the Fed can start all over again, and the rather central banks can start all over again by reflating the economy, and we'll be off to another 10 years of happiness. Well, um, Alistair has a, a fundamental view that sounds very similar to your view uh, as you look at your technical analysis. I do want to ask you with two minutes left here about silver. James Turk uh, made some comments yesterday. He seems to be turning very, very bullish. Now, James is usually bullish on precious metals, I should say. Long term, he is. 
Uh, but he seems to think that we could be getting close to a real turn in silver now. How do you see mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Uh, silver is up twice as much as gold today. Not that that matter day to day it happens that way sometimes. Uh, but silver um, performed worse than gold in the recent decline, which is typical of silver and also the gold miners. They do better on the upside, ultimately, when you unleash them, than gold. And on the downside, they do worse than gold. So they're like a wild dogs on a leash, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> but on the upside, there are better places to be, in my view, silver and the gold miners as opposed to gold. But gold is the mama, so you've got to watch it for your direction. But then I think right now the, the focus should be on buying uh, gold miners and silver. Uh, silver did reach a level that it closed, you know, it traded under 14 uh, last month, uh, late in the month, and, and I think early this month, and flipped immediately back up to 1450. It happens that uh, around the highs we've made in the last two days in silver, if you close the month out here, now that's a long way away, but if you close the month out here or higher at, at around today's highs, I think the turn is done. You are turning up. I've got some other things. You don't have to wait for month end in gold and the GDX. Uh, GDX today, the gold mining ETF, got up to 1977, and our published buy number was uh, just above there. If Mm -hmm. it closes a week just above today's high. So I'm looking Mm -hmm. for a weekly close up there anytime in the next few weeks. And gold is, uh, on a daily basis, has gotten above some numbers today that I think are, are, are positive. I prefer to have a weekly close up in this area. So we'll see. I think we've got like a half day tomorrow and two days on Thursday, Friday. So if gold can be hanging around the highs of the week by the end of the week, I think it's saying something. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much, Michael. He's, uh, maybe we're getting close to a breakout for the yellow metal and Thanks. the precious metals and those and those shares. We certainly would like to see that, those of us uh, who, uh, who invest in that sector, that's for sure. Uh, well, I see here the, uh, the Dow is down 729 as we go to break. Um, Gold is hanging in there today. It's uh, it's quite a quite a day, uh, but we do have to go to break now. Thanks so much for being with us again, Thank Michael. You. 